that is divisible by itself and one. I'm Ben Rosenthal, your maths teacher for this evening, and joining me right here alongside me, alongside, is Dan McGuinness. Hello, Ben. How are you going? I'm delirious, actually. <laughs> yes, you've been up very early, haven't very you? Very early. Nothing says I love you, daughter, more than mopping her vomit off a rug at 2.30 in the morning. So, Dan, <laughs> well, what's new? <laughs> at 2.30 in the morning, I was asleep. Yep. Uh, what's new? What's new? How's the store going? This, this lovely store. The store's going really good, actually. We've, yeah. um, we have, a, not this week, but next week, we have a, an announcement to make, which is a pretty cool announcement. Ooh. I'm not going to tell you what it is, because otherwise it'll be ruined. Oh. Um, and that's about it. So, it, uh, but it's a good announcement, just to show that we're, we're good. Yep, good announcement for good people here at Greenlight Comics. You like good comics and good people and good announcements? Come on down and have your announcement people be good. It was, uh, this week I was a bit shattered to find out that in Queensland the comic shop uh, Secret Identity, I think it's called, sh shut down, the one run by the ladies up there. Yep. Do you know what really saddens me? That? Um, well, yeah, that, <laughs> but uh, something else as well. And this is for you guys at home as well. Um, when you talk, you should really do it into the microphone and not look at me. Some nah. of you may have noticed that uh, in our podcast that the sound levels kind of go up and down a little bit. It, it's mainly because someone doesn't talk into the microphone. Oh. I thought it'd be weird not to look at you. So like this. So I'm, I'm going to talk to you like this. We're not talking to you. We're talking to them. Okay. Hey, people. I'm talking to Brayden, actually. An angle. An angle? No, no angle. No angle. Apart from anyway. the third angle. All right. I'll, I will do that. It, it's actually easier for me to not look at you. It makes me feel better anyway. So... <laughs> I get that a lot. Oh, we don't have a guest this week. <laughs> so that's why this show's been going stellar so far. It's been going great. Yeah. Um, what have you been playing recently? Um, I have been playing the... I don't know if I told you last time, but I've been playing The Evil Within 2. No. Yeah? No, that's not like you, because you, you're a big old scaredy face. True, but I played Evil, um, Evil Within 1. So this is the Resident Evil guys game. Like, So I was, I, I'm pretty sure it's like... The guy who created Resident Evil 1 and 2, he didn't do anything after that, and this was his first go at it. Ooh, erotic mic movement. And, um, yeah, and then I played uh, The Evil Within 1. I was like, meh, it's okay. And then this one, I started playing this, and it's awesome. It's yeah? like, it's scary without being too scary for me to play it. It's got, like, all these rad elements, like, you're always hiding and stealthily, like, stabbing people, like the zombie kind of people, and, like, it's always changing it up. Like, you think you've got the routine of all the game down and then you'll be like, suddenly it'll change everything on you and they'll just go, now there, it's not really a, now there's just a ghost walking through the game that you can't kill that you always have to hide from instead of like... Why do you have to hide from the ghost? Because it just grabs you and kills you. Like, it takes you to different places and, and, it, and it, it's awesome because the, the side quests actually, if you don't play the side quests, well, the side quests open... Um, their own whole storyline that you wouldn't even be in the game if you didn't do the side quests. Right. So, like, it's, they're not just, like, fetch quests to go get something. It's, like, whole giant chunks of game that just wouldn't be in it if you didn't do certain quests and stuff. Like, it's really good. Really good. Oh. Everyone should get it. It was on Steam. It was on sale. It was awesome. How's your Steam box going? Great. I fixed it. Oh, it's all fixed now? Oh, I just had a bung hard drive. A bung hard drive? Bung hard drive. Is that drive. like bung fruits? Yeah. For those of you not in Adelaide, fruits is Devon. In other words, it's five different animals all ground up and pushed together. In a it's chair. way more than five. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you play Rad Rogers? Now, uh, yes. Should I? I'll explain what Rad Rogers. Rad Rogers. It was a Kickstarter game from. Uh, I can't remember who it was now. What year? Oh. Uh, no, Rad Rogers came out last year. They, it was a development team. I can't remember the name of the team. I'm very sorry. I know your watchers and listeners. Um, so Red Rogers was basically a spiritual successor to Commander Keen. I love Commander Keen. Commander Keen's so good. So as soon as I saw a spiritual successor, Commander Keen, I thought, yeah, I'll back this. I'll give it a go. Uh, and, man, that went on quite a journey. Uh, they met their funding, then they exceeded their funding so they could put other uh, stuff in. And then THQ Nordic came along and said, hey, this is pretty cool. We're all going to jump in and do it with you. So we got a, uh, a publishing contract through THQ Nordic, uh, and then it came out uh, on the PS4 and on Steam, uh, and Xbox as well, maybe. Um, so I gave my Steam code to you. Mm, and I played it. So what it basically is, 
is a mate. It's a two point five. What is it? Two point five D game. They call them. So yeah, it's a sideways like scroller with a three D background. Very Commander Keen like. Um, except yeah, you're a kid who's playing his old school Nintendo, and then you get sucked into your Nintendo, and then you've got. Oh, it's not a Nintendo. It's a console. And then yeah, you've look, got. It's a NES. It, yeah. It, it's a NES. And then like the the console is in the game with you as your little character. He's like a rough talking, jiving, like fourth wall punk, breaking. Yeah. Thing. And you're shooting, and so he's cigar talk- smoking, yeah, baby, and you got big looking. guns straight away, a la kind of like Gunstar Hero, you got <laughs> everywhere, feet walking, feet walking, and uh, yeah, and you basically go through the game, and it's all about like the game. So there's like glitches in the game you can take advantage of or fix and all stuff like that, but still with that, full on just shooting and like, there's a bit of swearing in there. Bit of violence. Yeah, you, oh, can you can turn it off. You can turn it off, like the Mortal Kombat Blood Mode in Super Nintendo. But for people that like sideways scrollers with shooting and just like good stuff, and kind of like, I mean, it's not the same, but what was that Shadow Complex? Do you remember that? No. Still, in my opinion, the best 2.5D game that they've ever done. Um, amazing. It was. 2.5D. Yeah. 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 You know, not heard that term. I have not. Well, that's what it is. Dan. So. 2.5D. Glowing, glowing review. Rad. Coming at you. It's glowing. Rad Rogers. Rad Rogers. Rad Rogers. Yeah, go check it out. It's really good. It's on Steam. Uh, and support indie developers. Uh, I've also been playing Fortnite. Oh, really? I decided to give it a go uh, because everyone's playing because it. Because it's free. And because it's free <laughs> and I'm really tight. <laughs> like, Do you enjoy it? Um, it, It's fun. I think the best I've ever placed is about 27. No chicken dinners? Uh, no, I, I, I've killed one person in the probably 10 games I've played. Uh, and I've won purely because I go to a spot where... You <laughs> cheat. On top of a mountain. You camp. And, and just walk around. I don't camp. I walk around. I explore. Um, camp. But I make sure I get lots of really cool guns that people can just take off me when they blow my face off. Uh, with I haven't played 2. it. 2.5D. Um, you haven't played it? No. Is it just like PUBG? Exactly the same. About cartooning. Cartooning, yeah. and that's what I like about it. The fact that it is cartoony. Uh, they, th- those visuals appeal to me. And you can do funky dances. That's because you like Nintendo. That's why you appeal to the, the, the so cartoon. I'm yeah, I'm just saying, that's why you like it. Do you want to fight me? Yes. Well, you, you can't, because I don't <laughs> want another dead body on my hands. Ooh-wee. Ooh-wee. Sounds like there's more action happening out there. Uh, I hope those teenagers come back. That was, that was great. I'm pretty sure they're all, it's raining at the moment, so they're probably all spewing that it's wet out there. And there's people lining up for shoes as well. Speaking of shoes, time for some video game news. Oh, okay. okay. Yay. Like, video like, game news. Yay. Yay. All right, well, all right I've got my little book here. Uh, I'm leaning quite muchly into the microphone uh, to hopefully get my levels to normalise. They're not. I have no idea what's going on with this stupid, crazy contraption we call life but please tell me you put this plug this on plug it on it is plugged on what are you talking about is it on and right. i fixed it it's fixed i'm the fixer they call me the fixer bring your dog i'll fix it you know what that means i know tell me the news news all right i've lost my spot now we've got a lot of news uh shadow of the tomb raider was revealed today in an announcement that everyone saw coming but it's going to be out on the 14th of september but before november funnily enough Does anyone know what comes out in november Anyone? Any guess? Red Dead 2. So there's now, it's really funny to look at all these announcements of all these AAA games coming out, and they go, uh, we'll, we'll never say it, but seriously, we need to get this out before Red Dead 2, because no one's going to get a look in come November. Yeah, I so, don't know. Really? Yeah, it's Tomb Raider. People will always buy Tomb Raider. But if going up against Red Dead 2? I didn't like Red Dead 1, so... Really? Well, it actually is Red Dead 3 when you think about well, it. Well, technically, yeah. yeah. And it's also a prequel, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins is getting new DLC because uh, Activision is saying that they're going to support that. So uh, I think end of January they brought out the Teacher's Aid uh, DLC where you could just go around in a non-combatant role and just learn about Egypt, which is awesome, and what every historical game needs to do now because that's how you get games into classrooms. All I've heard about the new Assassin's Creed yep. is that there's some colossally good glitches in it. Like what? Just like, you know, um, Ross was telling me about some of the ones he's had, just like 
I can't remember what they were, but they were just amazing. He just keeps, every day he comes in, he just mentions the new Assassin's Creed glitch. Oh, I heard this really cool thing that's really awesome. You guys will love it. I can't remember what it was, but man. It's a glitch. Oh, yeah. Everyone knows what a glitch no, is. All I'm saying is that, you know, if you're going to have this grandiose statement about how awesome There's stuff like is, people riding up to you on a horse and they don't have a horse. See? Is that so hard? No. That's, that, that's hilarious. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, what's next? Uh, oh, I didn't finish the news. Oh, that's what I mean. What's... Ph- pharaohs and gods are coming to... Assassin's Creed Origin, so you can fight against those pharaohs and those gods, like Ibis Man and Anubis Face. He's he's a dead god, and he... What, do you beat him? Do you kill him? Do you kill death? Can death be killed? Ooh. In Assassin's Creed? Yeah. You play a god. It's obviously advanced from when I played it, when you were just taking, like... <laughs> yeah, you take out bad priest. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, this is the origin, so this is the first one. So there's so like there's you, more mythical things in the past you, you, and the future. You, that's right. <laughs> you kill the god, and then everyone lives forever. I can't believe they've still got that storyline going. Just of like, how many how many like computer companies are out there making these things that go back in time or whatever? Is it just always the same company making the Atomus? Yeah, it's weird. Can't see how they keep getting games out of it. He's a relative of the Stogosaurus. <laughs> Next. Uh, Spyro Trilogy has been announced for PlayStation 4 and possibly 98% certain the Switch. Spyro the Dragon? Yeah. Nah, so they did the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, uh, remastered it to rave reviews. Yeah, for, which is also, for one week. <laughs> which is also coming out on Switch. Thank you, Nintendo Direct, that we didn't get to cover last time, but hey. Uh, but yeah, Spyro on the Switch. So we're going to have Mario, Sonic, Spyro, and Crash. On one system. Gee, I wonder where this is headed. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, COD Black Ops 4 has been announced. Uh, another AAA game that's been announced in October 14th. God. So, <laughs> I'm seeing it right now. COD is constantly the best selling game uh, of the year. That's, I just never get into them. Neither I, do I. I play but the campaign. It's because you're not. And then I'm like, cool, yeah. cool campaign. That was at least four hours. And then I just, I, I have one round online, and then I'm just like, that's me. I'm it's done. you're not a 14-year-old boy um, who's says swearing at everyone. Yeah. Incidentally. <laughs> right, racially swearing at everyone. One of my guilty pleasures is uh, watching sort of uh, bad martial artists on the internet. And then when I was looking at them the other day on YouTube, I stumbled across... Uh, uh, People having uh, fan rage. Uh, fan rage? Uh, fan rage, yeah, yeah. Rage quits uh, playing COD. Oh, man. These guys are hilarious and psychotic. The best ones are the videos of the girlfriends that delete their World of Warcraft saves. Oh. Have you seen them? They're so oh, good. One. Please cut to them now, Brayden. Like, the, the <laughs> ones where they punch the TV, yeah. like the thing, or throw it through. The, and, and they, it, and they, you see them clicking and they're like, click, click. Click, click, and they're like, you can see them be a little bit confused for a second, and a couple more mouse clicks, and then it's just snap because they realized what's happened. It's so good. But the one I saw was Ooh, like, I'm really the, loud. The girl set up a, uh, a hidden camera, uh, and it showed just the screen and, and the guy sitting down. And she's made a comment, like, yeah, this will teach you to pay attention to me, uh, and deleted all this stuff and everything. And then jump cut, and the guy comes in, click, 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 and he goes, what? What? And just leaves out a shot. And then you just see his fist come in and punch the screen. Yeah, yeah, and he punches the wall. And he's like, wow, that girl's the luckiest person on earth. Wow. Exactly. Anyway, back wow. to uh, COD4. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the owners of uh, COD have said they're very aware of the popularity of PUBG and Fortnite. So, <laughs> oh, no. reading between the lines... <laughs> COD Battle Royale, coming at you. Have you got in the news this week about that um, that video that that Trump watched, the violent video uh, game video? No, I don't because I stayed away from it. I don't want to give that man any credence. All right. I'm just going to talk about the video because right, I watched the video. It was pretty funny. It was just the most violent bits of every video game known to man, the one second in every game that is the most violent. And I'm pretty sure every game was a Call of Duty game. It was 90% Call of Duty. It even had the, you know, the scene of, like, you know, the, the airport scene, you know, where you play Which the Which is banned anyway. Yeah. But it had, like, um, that's, you know, that sniper game where you, you, see, you see it go into their head and out the back and all that stuff. 
And I'm just like, wow, how's this this time? They're just they're just trying to get. It's called a scapegoat. Yeah, they're just trying to uh, anything with this school shooting. And they're like, oh, but it, let's, it must let's be game. Not, no, let's not get into that. We're, there's multiple studies saying that uh, there is absolutely no link between violence and shootings and video games. Uh, it's been proven time and time again. Uh, it's there, a scapegoat. There, there is things between shooting and violence. <laughs> you so said. says you. <laughs> I've got science that says no. Uh, Team Cherry. I, I joke about this a lot, but actual friends of the show, Team Cherry, have been nominated for a BAFTA for Best Debut Game. Yeah, nice. Uh, so it's the British Academy of Film and Television Awards. That's sick, man. I guess. Uh, so, yeah, well done, Team Cherry. Uh, of course, uh, Ken Wong, uh, the creator of, or the lead designer for Monument Valley, won one a couple of years ago and would not be surprised to see Florence get up there as well, because that game is just so good. It takes about 40 minutes. Why aren't you playing it? You should really play Florence. Have you played Florence? No, but I think about it every time I brush my teeth. I actually do. I think about it, and then I do my circles a bit better. <laughs> Next. <laughs> wow, you should not work more often, because that, that was a zinger. I, I, I have no comeback for that. <laughs> Next. That, that wasn't, Everyone, just I'm always that funny. Round of applause. Well, well What's done. your next news? Well done. Uh, Geralt from The Witcher. Is that his name? I guess so. I don't know. Geralt? 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 Jerry. Gerald? Jerry from The Witcher. Jezza. Uh, good old G-Man. The G-Spots. Oh, look out. Sorry, that's the only way I can find him. Uh, he's going to be what in... Point Sol- at the <laughs> gun. <laughs> there it is. With my 2.5D. Anyhow, go. Uh, We digress. (laughs) What are we doing? (laughs) Oh, I don't want to be on the show anymore. (laughs) Um, He's going to be in Soul Calibur 6. So he's going to take his big sword and he's going to slice up some souls. Says that that commentator, like, Geralt. (laughs) He doesn't even know how to say what his name is, Geralt. Geralt. Oh, I read it wrong. It's actually Gerard Jepardieu. He's going to be in Soul Calibur 6. He's going to come in, he's going to go, oh, now I'm being He fought insensitive. valiantly and then slept with the lady. Because <laughs> that's what he does. Who? Gerardo. <laughs> Giraffio. Giraffio, my favourite modern artist. <laughs> uh, speaking of modern artists, I don't know if you uh, heard the news, but there's a new Smash game coming for the Switch. Is it Super? No. Yes. Is that, is that it is. Don't yeah, they always call them Super? Yeah, it's Super Smash Brothers. If they just put a number on the end, like no. four? No, no. Or they, they, oh, they call them like Brawl and Melee. 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 <laughs> Have you seen that one? <laughs> uh, um, what's the next one going to be called? <coughs> Super Smash Brothers Pub Fight. <laughs> <laughs> Super Smash Brothers Barroom Brawl. <laughs> yeah. I'd play, um, I'd play that. So I've got some characters that I want to see either come in or Ooh, we've got a hit, leave. Hit list. I've got a hit list because. Uh, throughout the years, Smash Brothers has become very third-party open because they can be any. They're not. They can be anything. Basically. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, they're all toys. You, you're playing wind-up toy figures. They're not the actual characters, so you can have them beat up each other because they're just toys. Is, is that the point of the game? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's what Master Hand is. Like the big baddies, it's Master Hand. It's, it's someone playing, and they're all wind-up toys. Was that a thing they put bought into later things? No, it's been since the very first one. Genius. And our next. No, no, I'm. What's with your net? Oh, take your bossy pants off. Well, I just want to well, keep going. I've got going. the book show face thing. Yeah, well, I don't have a book, so I've got the net. because you're not prepared. I'm, I'm the showrunner. Give me the Frank Durabon Award. That's a really meta joke. I'm not sure anyone got that. I didn't. Ten characters I would like to see appear in the newest Nintendo Switch. Sure to be a hit game coming out in September to coincide with the online thing. Super Smash Brothers Switch. Uh, number 10, I would like to see Shovel Knight come on in. Yeah. Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight's on the Switch. It's been also on the Wii U. It's actually a really hard-to-find game now, so if you spot that in the wild, don't buy it. Do Just... I get one? If, if everyone, I'll put one I want in. All right, who do you want? I want Godzilla. Godzilla? It'd be great. Yeah. Pintail, Smash-O. Next. I've got one similar to that. You just stole oh, my thunder. Oh. That's all right. No, that's fine. Don't, don't worry about it, Dan. Oh, I'm making mine up. You could have a list. Uh, number 9, I'd like to see Sans from Undertale, which is also coming to the Switch. Oh, I don't mind that. Yeah, yeah. I would like. 
the Seaman character. Voiced by Leonard Nimoy? Yes. No, no, he's just the guy who helps out. Is he? But the Seaman in mid-form, where he's just like half bird man thing, fish man. And out next, with the really freaky face. And he doesn't actually do anything, he just sort of sits on his side. Now they can talk to you in this one. Really? Yeah. Oh, because you have the this, microphone, this don't you? This is the bird one, where they're like... This is number two. Number eight. I would like Ryu to hang around and still be in Smash. He was in the latest Smash one. Um, horribly voiced, though. I don't know who they got to... Sorry, whoever you are, if your voice was the man of Ryu, but... Ouch. I would like the president's daughter from Resident Evil... What one was it? I think it was Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4, the one on the Dreamcast they played. The president's daughter, you play it for like four seconds. Well, she's, you she have to lead her out, and if you go down the, the ladder and she stays up the ladder and you look up the ladder... She, she doesn't like that. No, she calls you bad words, and rightfully so. You, there, you are disgusting. What, what is wrong with you? There's never enough ladder gags. Do you look game. at your eyes with those mothers? Next. Uh, <laughs> My new thing. Next. <laughs> I would like either Korra or Avatar Aang to be in Smash Brothers. That would be cool. That would be awesome. Yeah. Wish I had thought of that one. Switching up all their abilities to bend and then their final smashes, they go into the Avatar state and just go and then the music plays. Yeah, everyone should watch Avatar and read the Korra comics and the Avatar Aang comics because Avatar, The Legend of Aang, best TV show that's ever come out. 100% right, correct. Well done, me. Mine. Yours. I would like the characters... They're actually behind us. From uh, one of the characters from Wii 3. One of the characters, like... The, the dog? We supposed to put the light on. It's because the batteries are flat. Uh, yeah, one of these characters out of Wii 3 is my next chick. My game's so much better than yours. I love the way you're just looking around. Oh, I want that chair. Well, I didn't have that a That chair's list. in Smash. Uh, maybe the bin as well. Shh, taking my, my I, want, I want Brayden in Smash. That was one of my ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number six. I would like... Can't read my writing. Oh, yeah, Crash. Oh, Crash, Crash Bandicoot. They have it announced, could be in it, yeah. They've announced the Insane Trilogy. Yeah. I wonder where my next guess is going. Is Sonic already in it? Sonic will most likely be in it. So you've got Sonic, you got Mario, you'll have Crash. He was. Yeah. Bro! Sonic was. Yeah. Incidentally, the, uh, 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 was it the Subspace Emirate? The what, single player game? That had the best introduction for Sonic ever. Like, it was just as they were coming up to the final battle with Master Hand. Mm hmm. And like everyone's teaming up and everyone's decimated and I think there was only Mario left. And then you hear this bam, 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 and this blue thing just goes pew, 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 and it's shoo, 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 and Sonic goes there. Hey! Uh, and yeah, Braden's showing it. They know yeah, it's it. on. Uh, the podcast people are loving my sound effects anyway. Uh, and yeah, it was just a great reveal because up until that point I forgot Sonic was actually in the game. And I popped like a mark <laughs> for all I, you wrestling fans out there. I would like uh, Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim, yeah, I actually thought of that. That'd, that'd be wicked. That would be cool. You played the cartoon one. Yeah, you, you played, <laughs> not Michael Sarah. <Cera. laughs> <laughs> Although I really would like to beat up Michael Sarah. Oh, good job. <laughs> He's great. He's a great soft spoken little man. Is he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He plays that one role really well. Uh, Travis Touchdown. No more heroes. Bring him in with his laser sword. Travis Touchdown. Yeah, you seen the footage for his new game? No. He goes into video games and plays different video games as Travis and beats them up. It's like Tron, but with Travis Touchdown. Where Touchdown! Uh, Boogerman. Boogerman. From the Boogerman series on the Mega Drive. Red card, not allowing that one. <laughs> he, to uh, he toots as well. <laughs> Ribbon Girl from Arms. I like That's almost a given, right? Ribbon Girl and the other They've dude. They've got the IP. Yeah, like with the curly arms and they're fighters. How many are you up to? I don't know. Yeah, we got one, two, three to go. Uh, I, go. What about I want the hat, the dino logo, yeah. man? The dino, yes! He wouldn't do much, he'd just come in and talk. <laughs> he wouldn't even, he doesn't talk, he just roars. He goes, and then leaves. Yeah, yeah. that's it. The theme plays. <laughs> he just the comes theme. in and goes, <laughs> nah. Well, Not the tonight. characters just put their hands over their ears and run out because like, they think that me and you might start talking. No, no, all the characters... They run off the ledge and hurt, kill themselves. They, they get their mouse and hover over the unsubscribe button. <laughs> Click! And then he disappears forever and no one cares. What's yours? Uh, Spyro. Oh, really? Yes. I love Spyro. No, you got Crash, you got Spyro, Sonic, Mario, all going at it, smashing up the place like brothers. That'd be... Rad to the max. I think I'll grab um, Kuroko from Kuroko's Basketball. I have no idea who that is. 
He's on a post there. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, he, uh, he's a character that has zero presence. So when he's playing basketball, no one notices he's on the court. And so he can just, when someone passes to him, people just go, who did they pass to? And, and if he... Oh, John Cena. No. See, I don't like the way that you don't get wrestling references, but Brayden does. I've got it. I just don't care about them. <laughs> you need to work from before we do this podcast from now on. Uh, number nine, or two, whichever way we were going. Uh, I want the T-Rex from Super Mario Brothers Odyssey to be in there, because that dude is cool. And the big T-Rex? But he has to be captured by Mario, so he has to have Cappy and he has to have the moustache. He wasn't in that game very much, was he? I thought they'd bring him back into it a bit. He was in it two or three times. On the first playthrough? Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe I just There was uh, an, a secret area where yeah, um, you, you jump around and destroy blocks. And then there was another one in New Donk City, which was really cool. You, you have to go across all this platform and you go down a pipe and you get in there and you're front onto the camera and you can't change the camera angle and you just start walking towards the camera. Then all of a sudden the T-Rex jumps down behind you and goes, Roar! and just starts chasing you yeah, and you have yeah. to leg it and it's coming after you. That, that did that like, Is that in the... That Sonic game with a whale was smashing through everything? That yeah, but that, whales, that I mean, wicked. who cares about whales? It's Everyone T-Rex. cares about whales, you know that. Put your hand up if you care about whales. Everyone just in the world whales. did that. Hippies. <laughs> Is that it? Save the T-Rex. No, one, one more. Last one. Number one pick. Number one. You want to go first? Because mine's going to blow yours out of water. I haven't got one yet, but go. All right. My number one pick for Smash Brothers, instead of Solid Snake, I want, with the exact same moveset, Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Put Hideo Kojima in Smash Brothers. Put him in there. He'd be bang up for it. He'd come in and he'd, he'd come in crawling in the little box and he would jump out of it and he would just kill everybody in the toe. Uh, my number one? It's not going to be Kojima. No, it's Neo from The Matrix. <laughs> yes. Wooden acting, the whole deal. There's so many good moves. Like what? Name two. All of them. No, that's not two. Kick, punch, <laughs> act. Three moves, there you go. Kick, punch, act. act. <laughs> which, which button are you mapping the act button to? I don't. The start button. <laughs> <laughs> so it just pauses the game? Yeah. Well, that's, his, that's what his acting's like. It's wooden and, and, and movementless. Anyhow, that's my, uh, that's my number one. Here. Where hack the dino? A fortnightly pop culture podcast. And I'm saying this now because I forgot to at the start of the show. Um, if you'd like to help us by subscribing to YouTube, that'd be awesome. If you'd like to help us by leaving a review on iTunes, that would also be awesome. You know what's really, really awesome? Is the fine people who go over to patreon.com and support us with a monthly donation. Uh, to, 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 to allow us to keep going so we can upgrade some equipment and go to Japan and film one of these for no reason at all. But that's got to happen. We'll put you My in the briefcase, Braden. Jetstar flies to... Yeah. Japan, Japan now, don't they? Yeah. Uh, so, a couple of people I really would like to thank. We've got two Patreon producers, which for $10 a month uh, support us, uh, and they are Luke and Tom Pascal. Thank you very much, guys. You guys are both incredibly yeah. awesome. Luke Beard. Um, Luke Beard? Well, he's just Luke on Patreon, so I didn't, want to, I didn't want to ruin his anonymity. Oh. An- anim- anim- I didn't want to Forget ruin his manatee. He's a Can manatee. You beep that bit out, Brayden? He's a sure. big <laughs> sea dude. He swims around. Go on the toilets. <laughs> so if you'd like to be awesome and get called a big sea dude by me on the show, head over to patreon.com backslash hack the dino and we'll take your money gladly with many hugs and kisses because we love you. Kiss all your hugs. <laughs> Alright, what do we want to do now? You want to do uh, questions or do you want to do comments? Yeah, I want to do the questions. <clears throat> you want to do questions? I don't have them all here. I've got two, but there were two, many two, more. Two, this is two, two. Uh, but I do remember one off the top of my head. Go. Okay. okay. Uh, this is from an anonymous person uh, who wished to remain anonymous. So I'll ask I'm an, this uh, anonymous. I'm anonymous. Go. I'm anonymous. Do, do, do. Uh, question. <clears throat> Specific to Greenlight Comics. Oh. So you should probably answer this one. I will. I bought one of the Greenlight Comics... Uh, Greenlight Comics of the Week last week and did not enjoy it. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying. Uh, <laughs> was this graphic novel picked to be the best of the week <laughs> of the 19 released because it was so bad and you just wanted to get it out of the store? <laughs> and also, what is the criteria 
for choosing the graphic novel of the week. I want to know what it was so that I can make an opinion of what, what graphic novel it I was. don't think it's important. I think the main thing he wants to know is what is the criteria for green light picking? Usually I will pick it on, obviously because I haven't read them because they haven't come out. Right. I would, I would choose, number one, the writer, the artist, and then the company, and then, um, and then our, how much people have pre-ordered it. So if it's a high pre-order, um, yeah, I will probably do that. They're my three kind of criteria. So if I see, like, oh, that's a good, that's a good writer, that's a great artist, got a couple of people down for it, yeah. It's, it's hard to choose things when you haven't read them. Yeah. So, so that's how I usually pick my uh, graphic novel of the week. So it is a, uh, there is some methodology. There is some it. methodology. But it's also a stab in the dark. It, it's a little bit of a stab in the dark, unless sometimes I get pre... Um, so I get pre-advanced, they send us PDFs of the comics and I can read them before they come out. Oh, see, more people should do that. Oh, they, a lot. A fair them do it. Um, uh, Oni Press does it a lot Yep. Uh, with their stuff and that, so you get to read the issues and stuff like that. So, And also, a lot of the time with the graphic novel, I would have read the first issue, so some of them that I've read... But then every now and then there will be a week that I don't know anything about any of the books. And, and it go, does happen. And I'll be like, well, I have to choose one, and that is the best cover. Well, just <laughs> so you know. That doesn't happen very often. But there like, are Hack the Dino viewers out there who <laughs> follow your words and are bitterly let down by you. Aww. So I think you owe them an apology. Nah. <laughs> nah. Sorry. I tried my best, so. Was that a real question? Yep, that was a real question put <laughs> to me. What? Really? Yep. Anonymously. That's hilarious. Came in anonymously. Yeah. And, and, and if you'd like to ask an insulting <laughs> question, <laughs> if you would like to ask an insulting question anonymously, un- that word, be sure to send us a line through the Facebook thing or uh, over at Patreon.com or on YouTube. You just can't please everyone. Or on iTunes you? after you leave, leave it as a review. It does show that at least one person is reading my emails. <laughs> <laughs> which is I thought crazy. it was on the green stream. Well, or I may have been on the emails. He does that as well? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't get that much information. Well, on the green screen, I do say that I had clicked this one in to be uh, thing of the week. Right. But yeah. All right. Uh, another I wonder question. what it was. Oh, was it that one that came out this week? I... Archival quality? No, I don't think it was that one. He told me, but I didn't want to bring it up because I think that's very poor businessmanship. Uh, is it right? I don't mind. Uh, I did clean up that as well. <laughs> um, speaking of cleaning up, Havoc Wrestle Rampage asks, what's that rash down there? Dan. Uh, dermatitis. There you go. Uh, another question we had from Mark was, uh, which artists do we feel have sort of dropped the ball or sort of maybe passed their prime uh, compared to their glory days? Like, can you think of anyone who... Artists or writers? <clears throat> no, specifically artists. Uh, can you think of anyone who you used to think was really, really good and for whatever reason, either their style's changed or maybe your, uh, what appeals to you aesthetically. Man, man. Aesthetically? Thank you, yeah. Um, whatever, what appeals to you has changed. Can you think two yeah, or three I people? I think, um, well, I've got, I've got one at least. I think my, one of my favourites is to be frank quietly and I really think yep. he has just gone... What did you like about it and what I like the strictness of his detail and his inking and that. And then like, when he brought out this Jupiter's Legacy thing, it was like he phoned the, the art in. It was just like so loose and it was just rubbo. Right. But, um, so quietly, I haven't like... When he does his single, like, his covers and stuff, it's still pretty good. But like his, his interiors are, are nothing like Wii 3 or um, X-Men. X-Men Tello. X-Men, he was awesome. Yeah, I knew X-Men. Um... But yeah, he, he's, he's not on that standard anymore. But that was my thing. But like, that's, maybe he's like not given... He's t- maybe in the industry now, timelines are pulled so much shorter that he just doesn't have time to put the detail on he wants to. I don't know. I'm not blaming him for getting crap. I'm just blaming him. That well, I, I he's here much. right now! <laughs> he's not. No, he's not. No, sorry. <laughs> I've got your hopes up and everything. Uh, for me, I never got Alan Davis. You never got him? I thought you said, isn't there someone you used to like and has gone down? Well, no, it's, sure. Well, I still think he's gone down because reasons. What is uh, Alan Davis thing? So, rating all right. So, on the, screen. the the best uh, thing I can think of is, and this might be because I feel slightly cheated by it, but uh, in 1998, 1999, Alan Davis was writing and drawing uh, the main X Men titles, which I was uh, watching at the time. And of course, leading up to the year 2000, they had uh, the big battle between Cable and Apocalypse. 
and it was the 12, and Apocalypse was gathering his 12 soldiers, and no one knew who their 12 were, who they'd been hinted at, and Cable was going to stop him. And it was all gearing up to this big, massive final battle in the year 2000 to stop Apocalypse before he takes over the world. And then they revealed that Apocalypse was an old man in a robot suit. That's not the artist's fault. He was also the writer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all right. Oh, that's uh, just... and, and I don't know if it's... Uh, like I was just so disheartened and let down. Like, yeah, legitimately. Uh, I, I, whenever I see his drawings now, I just go, no, nah. no. Nah. But on the flip side, an artist who I never really got their art, but now really, really like, is Mark Bagley. Bagley? Bagley? Bag Bagley? I don't know. What is he doing? Bagley? Bagul. He uh, has the longest run of consecutive issues, along with Brian Michael Bendis for Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, his, his uh, characters just look really weird. Like, they had, like, really big cheekbones, and, and, and their noses were always looked like they got smashed by a football, and... I don't mind that. <laughs> um, but now I really appreciate his art. Uh, and just out of curiosity, who's... I it, so this is like someone who was bad has gotten better. In my opinion. Well, we should really as well, that's a really hard one. Oh, I think that, uh... Otley. Yeah, Ryan right, Otley. Yeah, he got... He's, he's so good now. And yeah. uh, he, he, was he was okay he was... as a star. I think he's got hit good. Was he mimicking the yeah. previous artist? Yeah, but he's done other stuff as well. That's like, obviously, his earlier stuff wasn't as good as what he's doing now. What do you think of the previews of Amazing Spider-Man 1 that he's on? I haven't seen any of it. Cause it's like, what I'm... about the cover? You've seen the cover. No, I just haven't. Okay. It just looks a little static to me. I'll wait and put it little, as a little comic stagger. of the month and won't read it. Who's your favourite artist, comic artist at the moment? Oh, that's a good one. Um, my favourite comic artist? Who do I see? I'm really liking... Um, Heaps of the first, second artists. Yeah? I like, uh, uh, what's her name? Faith Erin Hicks. Yeah, she's awesome. I she's like great. her, like, just because I'm just, just wanting to just to see differentness in my stuff. I mean, but still one of my favourites is Frank Whiteley. Yep. Like, when he, when he nails it, he nails it, because he can nail it. Yep. <laughs> He's a carpenter. That's why. Yeah. Just like Jesus. Yeah. But, um, I'm just trying to think. It's a hard one to do. I'm, I'm sure there's someone as soon as we, like, halfway through the next segment, I'll just yell out a name. Well, for me, it's Stuart Eminem. Em Eminem? Eminem. Um, Eminent. <laughs> uh, he's awesome. He's fantastic. He was the artist on Next Wave Agents of Hate, which is where I was exposed to him first. Uh, and now he's doing Aven... No, he's not doing Avengers. Is he doing Avengers? Well, he's know. doing Amazing Spider-Man 800, so that's coming up. And written by Dan Slott, and that will no doubt be one of my favourite comics, because one of my favourite characters is Norman Osborn. Spoiler. Old Norm. Good old Normie. No, that's his grandson. Uh, there was one more question, uh, which I don't think we can answer because it was a little bit in-depth. Oh, I can't answer it. You might be able to. What's your uh, favourite Stephen Hawking uh, cameo appearance? Wait, in a comic? Comic, cartoon, movie. Don't know what he's been in. South Park? <laughs> I really been liked, in South Park, haven't they? I really liked him in that predictive text movie. That's not real. That's not real at all. Um, I don't know. All right, I'm just going to throw that one out. Sweet. That's <laughs> it. Questions are over. You want to talk about comics? Yeah. Yeah, what do you got? I read this this week, which was our comic of the week <laughs> a couple back. If anyone... Uh... Anonymous, if you'd like to get your eyeballs on this baby. So this is Firebug, written by... Hang do I want to do this review? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can do another one for Patreons. Patreons get... Exclusive comic book reviews as well as heaps of other awesome stuff like pre-show, post-show. Do you know what we did in the pre-show before this? We gave away the variant comic for free. No money for you. Just, here you go, Patreon person. Thank you for signing up. Continue. So I read Firebug this week. Um, so it's written by Johnny Christmas, which is the best name ever. <laughs> for it's any... real? No. Oh, if it is, his parents should get a tick next to their <laughs> name. Well, I don't think they chose it. And then Tamara Bonvillain. Wow. Bon, bon no, those, name, those names aren't real. Because if they are, they're two of the coolest what? names yeah, ever. Yeah, I know. So um, this was an OGN out, which means it uh, it only came out like this form, an original graphic novel, so it wasn't ever... Oh, wait, or was it issues? I might be like... I might just be pulling your leg. Wow. It's an organ. Oh, it was originally in... Um, Image Plus magazine. Right. So, yeah, it's a kind of is an OGM, but not. Anyhow, um, so it's basically the story, and it's by Image. 
and it costs $27.18. Yep. It's a story of, you don't know when it's set or anything, but it starts very far back with gods being created, like fire gods and all stuff like that. Um, you've got this like, weird kind of Egyptian vibe, and then it, and it's all about this, these fire gods, and like, you know, they did this, they did the earth and that. You, you get, skip forward, um, and the technology has moved on, and the goddess of fire is being held by this religious sect. So once there's goddesses, of course, cults and religions come with them. And yeah, it follows a offshoot religion that is trying to free this goddess um, because the other religion has her trapped. And they think, you know, you want to free her, free her, blah, blah, blah. Anyhow, they get her out, and then they realise that she's kept there because if she goes to this mountain, she lays waste to the world, and then um, the world gets rebuilt. And so they're like, oh, yeah, this is bad, whatever. And the main character, which is this uh, young lady, it becomes this goddess. Anyhow, I don't, I'm not, without giving too much away. Yeah, without um, giving that, the that, entire story Yeah, away. that was only a little bit of it. Yeah, that, and then there comes these other goddesses and this battle. So it's basically this kind of just... So it's super smash god. Yeah, it's basically gods on gods kind of thing, like fighting each other. It's one off. This is a you know standalone story. This is no other volumes to it. You get your whole story in there. It was just a, a it was just a, a good read that had you know it felt it had its start, its its peaky middle, its end fire, and had then its it ended. And, like, and you're like, cool. Had some words. Had an opportunity. Awesome pictures. Got an opportunity for it to um you know if they want to do another one they can. They've got a bit of an opening in there. There's a protagonist and an antagonist. There are both those things and a lizard person. Well. What more can you ask for? Um, so if you're into, like, um, old schooly gods that, you know, and, and that kind of, like, thing. It's very Neil gaming kind of thing. Well, I was going to say, God, it God-y. is very reminiscent of the opening pages of Sandman where they go to trap death but accidentally get a uh, dream instead and, and then no one has dreams anymore. There's also because... a love story in there as well. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, they find a love story in there. Everything. Gods and love. Hey, can I hijack your segment for a sec? Yeah, I've finished. Oh, cool. Um, I've got this thing here. So for those of you listening to the podcast, I'm holding up in my hot little hands uh, XCT Most Wanted. Now, some of you may know that I am the current soon-to-be writer. I've written two scripts, but uh, I'm the now full-time writer for XCT Extreme Champion Tournament. Plugging it. Plugging it away. Uh, And this is the anthology. Thank you. That's the anthology of uh, stories. 10-page shorts with, my goodness, that's an awful face, um, focusing on different uh, monsters or characters within the XCT universe. Uh, I think there's six or ten different stories in there, different writings and different artists on each story. I wrote one about Miyamoto Musashi uh, going up against the Tengu, which, for those of you watching on YouTube, can see him. He's the big red dude with the big... Big long nose, and he's got some wings. And Japanese, he's a, he's folklore. very yes, very mischievous person, and very evil as well. He, he just he wants to turn Masashi into a Tengu as well, and Masashi's not having any of that because he's stealing stealing people from the village, and they throw down. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> that's out now. You can get it through uh, the Comics to Movies website, or looking up XCT, or at Greenlight Comics, right? I think so, yeah. yeah it's also I think we've ordered some in. They haven't arrived yet. Okay. I, saw, I saw emails going back and forward. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a graphic novel as well. You know I mean? It's not an issue, so it's a full graphic no, novel. and that's the... Sta- Most wanted. Yeah, that's the uh, um, uh, format in which they're all coming out from now on. Uh, oh, really? Only, yeah, they're only coming out in graphic novels. What I'm trying to do with them is have it address the ongoing overall storyline or the ongoing arc or act. Don't breathe on it. Uh, but also be self-contained. So you can... Don't make out with it. So you can uh, buy one graphic novel and read it and get a self-contained story. Hopefully there's enough to get you to buy another one. But if not, that's cool. You're just dead to me, that's all. <laughs> uh, did, we, did we mention it was Sean Keat? Sean Ke- oh, it was created by Sean Keenan. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should mention that. Yeah, <laughs> Sean's been on the show. Not just, I wrote this bit. I did all this. I wrote a 10-page <laughs> story. But he hired me and, and pays me money to write the words. You're so a professional writer now. Not really. I write words, and, and Sean likes them. So Done. I like him. So pick it up, XCT, Extreme Champion Tournament. It's like the UFC, but with mythological beings all fighting each other. Are they in a little ring? They're in a coliseum, a futuristic coliseum. For now... What, like... Wink. Futuristic coliseum. Isn't that just... Isn't that just... A coliseum? Yeah. U- UFC? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a big time. Big, big place. 
That's it. That's it. Um, we were going to play Dan versus the World, but uh, I didn't have any songs prepared. Um, we should cut it off then. We we do oh, have we do have our monthly L five R Legend of the Five Rings tournament today, so, so we could just cut it off and let these these guys set up. We could. All right. So we've been hacked the Dino. This has been a little bit of a shorter episode, but there are extra episodes over at Patreon. That's right. I mentioned Patreon a little bit. What do you do? Sorry, I'm just speaking in binary. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, if I was Neo, I'd be speaking in binary. Yeah, whatever. If I was Neo, I could understand that <laughs> from the, from Smash Brothers. Dan, press the act button. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com backslash hack the dino. Uh, you can go there and for as little as I think it's $3 a month, that tier, you can get a uh, fortnightly uh, podcast called Hack the Dino More. Uh, it's me just rambling about anything that goes on. Is it just you? No wonder I've never done it. I didn't even know this was happening. <laughs> so it, it's on uh, the off week. So this is a fortnightly podcast, and then the every other fortnight, it's me just rambling about what went on. The one that came out just before happened on the same day as the Nintendo Direct. So it's basically me sitting there just going through each of the titles that was announced on the Nintendo Direct, and it's awesome. I'm nowhere near as titles delirious. I can enunciate, and it's a good time for us. Enunciate? Awesome. Enunciate. <laughs> um, cool. So... We're Hack the Dino. You can check us out at hackthedino.com uh, on all the Hack the Dino social things and also on the YouTube. We, we need more subscribers on the YouTube. Dan, get your friends to subscribe on the YouTube. I'll get Brayden, I'll get, get, your, get, get your friends to subscribe on the YouTube. I'll get my friend to subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking now because I'm literally going to die. I am Dan McGuinness. I'm going to say goodbye. I am the owner of Greenlight Comics and that is where we are now. So I was just pointing the on-air sign. Oh, it came on. on. It finally so. came on. We're on air finally, just as we're not. Now we're not. Bye. <laughs>